Hey, Logan, I don't mean to pick on you or sound harsh, but you're on the ice for the winning goal. Just how did Connor get open like that, and what, what could you guys learn from that? Um, yeah, I think it was just loss of coverage. Can't leave the best player in the world open like that, so that's, uh, that's on us and on me. And um, I think that play I just saw, um, you know, them coming in on the forecheck, and I was trying to get back to support the defense, and obviously the game happens really fast. So um, gonna have to watch some video and, and make sure that doesn't happen again. Front left, Tracy. This is for, this is for both of you. There we go. This is for both of you. Um, you know, what, what positives do you take out of last night? What do you need to see more of uh, in game two that maybe might not have been there? Uh, I think for positives, I mean, we're really close to winning that game. It's a double overtime game, and uh, you know we don't think we played nearly our best. So I think it's just little details we need to fix up here. But yeah, it's a it's a close game that could have went either way, and we ended up on the wrong side of it. But um, we know we we have better. Third row on the left. Uh, for for either of you, really, uh, the, the game one phenomenon is is very strange for this team. Is there anything you can find, any kind of commonality you can find that explains that? And perhaps more importantly, what is it about this team that's been able to just move past that and win the series anyway? Uh, I mean, if we could win a game one, that'd be great, but it uh, is what it is. So um, I think we just got to move past this game, learn from our mistakes. Um, like uh, Steeler said, like we didn't play our best, so and we're still close to winning the game. So uh, we're going to be better uh, tomorrow night. Second row on the right, Mike. Hey, Sam. Uh, what does the, a little less for a lot more mean to you guys as forwards? Because it seems like not only are you, you know, getting more minutes, but also when you shuffle around every lineup, it just seems like you fit together no matter how Pete decides to put you out there. Yeah, I think, you know, we have so much depth up front and on the back end too that um, you know some guys take a little bit less minutes less power play whatever it may be to you know just for the greater good of the team because you know we have so much depth and I think that's a big thing that's um, gotten us through these first couple of rounds so yeah second row on the left yeah guys for either one of you uh the power play went over five last night, but it's not to say that there was nothing happening on it, right? You guys were really close to winning it in overtime, two posts uh, on the Connor McDavid uh, double minor. From your vantage point, did you like it, uh, the, the way it was operating? Do you think there's more to it that, uh, that the guys could have uh, given? Uh, yeah, like you said, we had our chances, so um, it's a game of inches, could have went in. If not, and you know it is what it is. But I think, uh, like you said, we were creating chances. That's all you can ask. So just got to bear down and, uh, yeah, look forward to the next game. Front row on the right, Leah. Oh, this one. There we go. Um, as a PK guy yourself, what do you notice that Edmonton's doing on the penalty kill that was just so effective last night? Uh, yeah, I mean, they did a pretty good job there. Aggressive. It seemed like... Um, Entry was a little bit of an issue, so they, you know, they did a really good job. But you know, I'm confident in our power play group to adapt, and you know, they've done it all year. So, um, yeah, you know, they're going to look at video and make adjustments and whatnot. But um, they they did a good job last night. Back to Tracy on the left. Sorry, Logan. Just uh, it, specifically at that that last uh, two power plays that you had on the double minor and everything, and even. Um, uh, Knobloch mentioned that, okay, they, they were starting to get to us a little bit. What were you guys seeing specifically in that double minor that you were able to get the chances, you were able to get a little zone time and everything, and how can you push that forward? thought we had a shooting mentality, just even from from the bench. Like I could see the guys were, were hungry to get pucks on net, and uh, yeah, a couple posts back-to-back, -back and uh, just so close, so. Um, would it be nice to end it right there, but, uh, yeah, just going to make adjustments and make sure we bear down next game. Middle right, Sean. Seems to be a common theme with the team that you guys feel you have a lot more to give than you showed in game one. What, what are the areas you think that really stand out that you, you expect to be better? Um, I think our puck management through the neutral zone 
They're a, they're a team that's great on the rush, and I think we we fed them a little bit too much with turnover pucks. Um, and yeah, that's a, a thing that we've been really good at throughout the postseason and all year, really. So uh, yeah, I expect us to, you know, we know what we have to do. So anything else? Thanks a lot, guys. No, oh, I mean seven in a row. It's it's one of those things that's happened. We're in this position. And we were ready to go kind of get that win the other night and it didn't happen. So I, I think the biggest thing, there's good character in this room. And then, you know, the understanding of it's not over. we got to go, you know, do a job. And you're in a little bit of desperation mode right away. You want to go, you know, this next game's important. When you look at Thomas Harley and, uh, you know, Pete was talking yesterday about how he had to go down and, and work on his game in the AHL and everything. And now he's up here playing top defensive pair of minutes with Rope Hint or Miro Heiskanen, sorry, Ron yep. Finn. Uh, but just what, what have you seen from him in terms of, of a young guy who's really made an impact? Yeah, good for him that, you know, you go down in a, in a situation where, you know, he's not looking to go down and makes the best of it, gets, gets to work, understands there's more to be done and more to develop and, you know, I think makes that time down there count. And, um, you know, last year when he came up, it was like instantly everyone's kind of like, you know, kind of got something here. You, you see the confidence, um, the work he put in, and how he can skate, and he was good with the puck, and he was uh, did a tremendous job. So that's, that's credit to him and what he was able to do. But, yeah, big big piece of this team. Obviously, there's so many young, talented guys on this team, but what is it about this organization that's allowed them to succeed so quickly almost the moment they step into this room? Well, they're, they're good players, you know, and good people. Um, you know, there's probably something to be said about the character of those kids. You know, and working and wanting to do it the right way and not cut corners. So, um, you know, they've come in, they've stepped in. I, th I think there's been a good surrounding of players around them as well. And, you know, you look at what Jamie's been able to do with Wyatt on the ice the last couple of years and being around them and talking. And, you know, this, so there's different, they've slotted in good spots, I think, on top of it. And, but they've made, you know, they've made, they've left their impact and, and they've, Made the players around him better as well. What's been your role in that? I know you've invited some into your home, obviously. So, I don't know, just try to support him. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about what Wyatt has brought to your family? I know you've been a mentor to him, but yeah, he's a great kid. You know, at home, which just it's, it's it's funny. You see, he loves the game. You know, he, he's relaxed. You know, it's right, when we're home, we're just kind of having fun. You know, hanging out and doing different things. And, um, but definitely, he's, he's been a big, big piece of this team. Joe, there's been so many good things about the Wyatt story. Was there anything weird about him? Did he hold the fork funny when he first started living with you? Did he not know how to do laundry? There's got to be something that you had to work with him I, on. I it think feels the like. first few weeks, he didn't know where to sit in the living room. You know, there were some moments where he just it was standing there and kind of like, <laughs> sit down. You know, it's all right. You can sit next to me on the couch if you want. It'll be all right. But um, no, it's everything's been pretty smooth. Watched you work on your game a lot over the years, right out early with Brent Burns in San Jose. But yep. It's double overtime last night. It's highly optional today. Why are you up there? Well, oh, I think there's just, uh, I believe I have probably more to give. There, there's certain areas in my game that have been fine and, and good, and certain areas that need to improve. You know, So at the end of the day, there's no excuses for me that way. It's it's about finding it and wanting it and um, you know this is a great time of the season to be playing it's it's not all about rest you know as much as you get there's still times where you got to push and, and get some reps in and um, it's just probably wanting more out there you know we all do Joe the the power play seemed to get better as the game went on last night uh, especially in the overtime you got chances you had posts yep. uh, from your vantage point uh, how happy were you with the way it looked and how much better can it get? Well, that, it was it was a better power play, you know, leading up to that point. The other ones weren't as dangerous as they need to be. Um, but in that situation, in this time of year, it's about production. It, it really is. And so we, we let one slide there and we were around it and we just weren't able to get the, you know, get it across the line. I would be with an old one too. What was it like signing that banner at the beginning of the year, and how much does the pledge of a little more for a little less for a lot more help now? Because it seems like you guys have got the energy because you've yeah, you, shared the load. Yeah, for sure. You know, guys, it's what this team's about. You know, you got a lot of good players, guys that get hot and um, you know deserve more ice time at times, and and that's kind of 
it's been the same all year, you know, and guys have done a great job supporting each other and getting taking care of business at times. And um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely a, a piece of this team for sure. And last two games of overtime, it seems like you guys have been the better team as the game has gone on. Does that philosophy mean you have more energy in five periods or four yeah, periods? Yeah, and we got a ton of trust, you know, yeah. up and down the lineup. Uh, I think number one, you're, you're able to do that. And it definitely felt it in the Colorado game and, and even last night at, at times. Hey, Pete, I thought a lot of the night you did a decent job of McDavid. Like, I remember um, Miro stepping up on him, Marchment back pressure to break up a play. But he gets free at the end of the first overtime for that chance, and he gets free, especially on the winning goal. What do you think of the most of the night and those two plays in particular, if you don't mind breaking them yeah. down? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you. I thought, I thought defensively, um, kind of from our red line back, we were pretty good. I didn't like our puck management, which, uh, you know, kind of fed their, their rush a little bit too much for my liking. You know, those particular plays, um, you know, we got kind of a broken breakout where our forward on the winning goal, are, uh, you know, so we end up with both defensemen and a forward below the goal line. And um, Jamie Ben got tangled up up the ice in kind of a, a, a collision. I think it was Wyatt Johnson and, and one of their other defensemen kind of all got tangled up 200 feet away. So he was late getting back and, and uh, you know, Bouchard did his credit kind of recognized that and, and got down the wall and made a, made a good play. I mean, those, those things, those kind of breakdowns happen and, you know, just wrong, wrong guys uh, on the ice when it happened. You know, the other one he was alone on was a little bit of a blown coverage. Uh, we kind of overplayed uh, one of their drivers and left him at the net. But, you know, you're going to – we played, what, five periods almost. You're, you're, there's there's going to be little mistakes. And, um, yeah, the, he, they're going to get their looks, you know. Um, I thought Jake made some big saves. I thought at the end of the day and re-watching it, I thought, I thought one team kind of came into the game with a game seven mindset – them and and I thought we were we looked like uh, we had a kind of a five day off mindset and it's just thin margins so we got to get that fixed. Front row on the right, Leah. Hey Pete, uh, when you watched back the power plays, Edmonton's penalty kill, what jumped out to you? Well, I, th I think it's the same thing I just talked about. I think that bled into our our power play too. I think you know one team with a game seven mindset from a desperation level and execution level and and one not so we, we've got to we've got to get that fixed and I think that's that's both five on five and power play. I know so, sorry uh, I know that it's only been one game but when you look at this series do you see that as you know we'll just adjust on the power play or is it going to be we really have to capitalize on our five on five chances knowing how good they are? On uh, special no teams? I, I think we can adjust you know I expect us to adjust I think our, our execution you know when when our when our mindset in the rest of our game gets in the right place, that'll, that'll, I think, fix our power play. Third row on the left. Pete, um, what is it about the way this team is built, structured, coached, that's allowed so many young players to step in and succeed yeah. so quickly? Yeah, well, one, really good young players. I mean, you know, no, it doesn't matter how good the coach is if, you know, you're, you're not hiding players this time of year. At the same time, you know, the fact in double overtime that you've got Johnson and Stankoven on the ice against McDavid is, you know, that's a that's a testament to to the trust we have in those kids and how good they are and, uh, you know, the future of, of the program because, uh, you know, that's a big ask. And, and those guys have done that every, every round of the playoffs against McKinnon last round, against Eichel in the first round. So, you know, same with Harley. Um, so, you know, it's it's a great feeling as a coach. I, I think every coach wants to play young guys. I think we all, we all you know, understand the importance of that. Um, but young guys have to allow you to play them too, especially this time of year. And, and I think, you know, the young players that we're playing in those situations have allowed us to do that. Front left, Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Hello. 
Pete, you talked uh, yesterday morning about Thomas Harley and the jump that mm-hmm. he made going down to the AHL and really crafting his defensive game. It could be heady stuff for a guy to come up here and then you go, okay, you're with Miro, he's getting it. Mm-hmm. How does that dynamic work? You know, what is it about those two, their games, their chemistry, yeah. whatever it is, that it's worked? Yeah. Well, I think both both similar skill sets, right? Both big rangy guys that skate really well, think the game, good offensive instincts. Um, but, but I think what allows it to work is Thomas Harley's uh, really mindset. Um, you know, when, when you talk to Thomas, he's never overwhelmed. He's never too high or too low. You know, he's really kind of got that unflappable kind of uh, um, personality. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of guys put in that situation, you know, and and it it happens with a lot of young players. They're kind of overwhelmed, you know, by the moment and the situation and who I'm out against. And, you know, it's a confidence thing. And and he's got got an unflappable kind of self-confidence to his game that, you know, really has allowed him to, to step in there and you know I haven't I haven't seen any uh, you know situations where you know he, he hasn't looked comfortable or hasn't rec- ha- hasn't had the self-awareness to recognize you know what was going on around him even if he's made the wrong read he knows before you talk to him about it um, so pretty unique unique for a young guy like that. Take three more, second row right, Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, just any rope hints update today as far as skating and possibility for tomorrow? Yeah, skating and possible for tomorrow. That's a good one. <laughs> 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 and then in late in the game and in overtime, uh, you ch- took broke up the Ben Sagan to down off line, which is possibly the best yeah. line going. Yeah. Which is a – is that great to have that option? And it seemed to work, but it just – it's like how do you make those decisions in a – tie game to take apart the line yeah. that's working best and and then it seems to work yeah well you know i think i think that decision and you're right that line was had probably been our best line to date but you know we were looking it was more to fix some other lines and get some other guys going um and sometimes you have to do you know make those decisions uh in order for the good of the group and i felt going in into the third overtime and double overtime we needed more of the group to get going so not an easy decision to make because those guys were were humming pretty good but we we had to get some other guys on board that i didn't think were quite there back right kyle hey, kyle. hey pete i just going back to what you said about you know the young players allowing you to play them in certain mm-hmm. situations like what's it been like as a coach watching kind of how rapid the growth has been the last couple of months stan coven in particular yeah. considering he hasn't been here all year yeah, it's 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 really rewarding. I mean, we wouldn't be here without the the energy that those young guys have infused into our group every day. You know, they they've got uh, great energy, great legs. You know, that young enthusiasm I think has been really good for our group. Um, yeah, T- Tank's been uh, been exceptional. He probably could have come up, you know, obviously earlier in the year. You know, he probably could have made the team out of training camp, but. Um, you know, I think Jim, as he always does, made made the decision to put him down with the big picture in mind. Um, but I think Jim also knew that and felt that he was going to help us at this time of the year, you know, if he kept progressing on the track he was on. And he did that plus some. I mean, he led the American League in scoring and, you know, w- was ready when he got here. And I think you know, because of that, because he took the proper steps, you know, I, I think it's the transition's always easier. Last one, second row on the left. Hi, Pete. Uh, in this series, we have two teams of which one is just super talented, it's got the superstars, and one team that is super deep, which is yours. Uh, as a We're coach. the other one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you may disagree there, but I think that's the, uh, the overall sentiment uh, uh. from folks. Uh, as a coach, what do you think, like, what is easier to coach? A super talented team yeah. that's got a McDavid and Dreisaitl and uh, Hyman, or, or a super deep team that they can go four lines? And uh, how do you yeah. make sure that the deep team wins? It's a, it's a great question. I, I don't know if there's a right answer to that. Um, you know, I think, 
you know, I I also don't think it's as as clear cut as that. I think I think Edmonton has really underrated depth. Like I'll give you an example. I, I know the big guys scored for them last night, but I, I thought you know some of their depth was was the biggest difference in the game last night. They got some great contributions from their depth, both both at five on five and penalty killing. You know, and I think on the flip side for us, I think I think our skill is a little underrated. I know the numbers don't bear out, um, but you know we have. I, I think we have guys that that have the capability of putting up more numbers if they played in a situation where they played more or they played the entire power play, uh, you know, and didn't, didn't kind of spread it around like we do. So thanks a lot, Pete. Okay. Thank you.